Hello tennis nerds, I'm here with my buddy Daniel. We've been testing a racket today belonging to an ATP pro player. He's been top 10. I don't know exactly his ranking, but it's very close to it. Karin Hachanov, sorry for my Russian pronunciation, but this is his frame. It's a blade. It's always tough to know if it's a blade or a blade pro. Apparently Hachanov has switched racket from this H22. And this is according to my buddy Johan, who had uh, Hachanov's racket before I bought it from him. Uh, he switched from the H22 to the Blade 98 last year. And if you look at pictures, it does seem to be the case uh, that he has played with the H22, but now with the Blade 98. How can you tell? Uh, it's a one classic thing there with the H22 versus the, the Blade 98. So you have the Blade 98 with a slightly more rounded beam. And you have the H22 with a, a bit more boxy beam and a bit wider in the throat. And I can show you uh, how that looks. So here we have Hachano's racket. And you can see here it's kind of rounded uh, on the, the beam here. So a little bit rounded, semi-narrow here. So pretty standard blade looking racket. But then we have an H22. Uh, obviously it's in a burn cosmetic. So you can see it looks very similar to the naked eye. But this has a more rounded beam and this which is pretty dent that this is Nikki's racket is flatter and more boxy and you see it's kind of more differently shaped in the throat and also the string spacing on the 1820 in case of Hachano's racket I'm not exactly sure which which blade generation this is uh, which mold they based it on but the pattern is not exactly the same if I line them up uh, so, it's not the H22, it's the Blade 98 that Hachanov plays with. And he plays with very similar specs to if you just get a Blade Pro, which is the H22 from the Wilson Pro Labs. Uh, so, hopefully, it have ironed that out. Always fun to play with um, Pro Stocks from players. What I noticed with this Blade, compared to the one that I tested on the channel before, which was 1819 pattern, that one was a bit softer, felt a bit better on impact. This feels more pingy, uh, still nice, but but it does feel like it has a smaller sweet spot. Uh, and uh, I, I did enjoy that one, the 1819, a bit better. Also, maybe the pocketing of the 1819. Obviously, you remove one cross string, you're going to have a little bit better pocketing, uh, while this one, yeah, was more difficult to use overall. Uh, plays nice when you hit the sweet spot, but if you don't hit the sweet spot, you get punished really badly. So Hachano nowadays playing with a Blade 98, uh, as you can see, with the more rounded beam. Uh, I have to adjust that on my website because he was playing with an H22 for a long time. For a while he was also testing to go to Yonex, if I'm not mistaken, uh, two years back. Uh, but now with this frame, of course, at the Australian Open, he's playing with the Blade version 9 cosmetic, which I've shown you in a previous video. Still uh, hoping to do that review very soon. I've played with the 98 60, 19 so far, but I hope to test the other blades as well. Another thing to add about the specs of Hachano's racket being a 336 swing weight strung, that's around 306 without strings, below 340 grams. This is a very common spec range that you have a static weight of 340 grams. I'm sorry, I'm not doing ounces here, but 340 grams and around 340 or slightly below swing weight. That's a very common pro player spec these days for these type of control rackets, whether it's a 95 like Karatsev, for example, or uh, something like this, a 98 for Hachanov. So you see a lot of those specs around 340 swing weight. The 370 swing weight, which like Mari and, and Rafa uses, is pretty rare, I would say. And 350, 340, that's where I think where most pros are. Then some pros go below 330 even. Uh, Dan Evans, Denis Shapovalov, uh, and a bunch of other players. But uh, yeah, it's definitely up to your taste, your swing speed, and so on. And you're feeling like when you play with it, when you just started hitting the first impression? Um, I like the feel, um, but I can feel that there's a lot of weight in the head compared to my rackets. I usually have them a bit more like um, head light, not head heavy. And I feel there's a bit more uh, weight in, in, the, in the hoop, yeah. which the... makes it a bit more difficult to use for me. Yeah, close to balance. Um, yeah. I like the feel, but uh, this, the sweet spot is very small on this racket. And when you hit a bit off center, you can feel it a bit wobbling around and yeah. stuff. It's not that stable. Mm. Um, so for, for me, I would not choose the racket because it's, it's too demanding for me. I have to like hit through every ball with 100%. I don't get easy depth with it. Um, but I understand if you're a big guy like Karen and uh, you have 
yeah, you need to, to you need to control that a bit. Then maybe this is a good racket. I need a bit more help for my racket. <laughs> like it's a setup that you could play with. Like you could just go and buy a blade in the store and just add all the power and and you don't need to add weight because it feels almost like stock. But like he said, it, it's it's when we tried it with Carl as well, and we all said like, okay, nice feeling, but the sweet spot is super small. And as soon as you hit outside, it feels pingy, like metally yeah. kind of like you're like wang, wang, you, you feel you need almost like a damper on this one because you felt like as, as soon as you got a bit off, it, it's very demanding. Like yeah. I, I can see Pro Tour maybe, but even like with Karen, you would say. It would be interesting to put some more powerful rackets in the hands of some players on the tour. We talked about it before, like that it would give them more, you know, to yeah. compete with. But but obviously some control will go. But. Also, the launch angle is pretty like flat. Yeah. So you 18, don't, 20, yeah. yeah, you don't get a lot of free spin or, or depth with it. No. Uh, you really have to work for that. So it's yeah, I can see that you have to play a lot of tennis to play good with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You really need to dial in. You need to have yeah. a big forehand yeah. <laughs> uh, swing. But yeah, yeah, it's 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 a tough one and nice to try the the pros rackets. Some of them are very different. Not all pros play with super high swing weights like 350. This is 336. You know, there's some younger guys. They play with more power, more lighter rackets to be able to whip it a more. Uh, Karen has his technique, his style, and usually it comes from what they used as a kid. So it makes sense that it's it's uh, it's something that he's familiar with, but. Not an easy racket, not something I give to a rec player while I play with the match myself because I, I think I'll, I'll struggle. No, no, no. The feel is nice though. Yeah, like when nice. you like the, like the feel, it's, the pocketing is nice also with the string. I think mm. that this setup is um, dialed in, yeah, but, 100%. but not, not for me. <laughs> no, it's dialed in for Karen, but not, not for us. So I think that's just the, the way you cannot really copy a pro player spec. You need to find your own spec. Yeah. That's 100% it. That's it for today. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis. <laughs>